Well, we still have Tebe Ikalafeng in the studio. Before we went on the break, he was telling us about the challenges he faced in the workplace. Now, let's talk about Africa, Tebe. Um, I know, I know, sis, that you know you do a lot of, you work with a lot of people who have, who have Africanized their brands. Um, why did you take interest in the African brand? Well, in the past 10 years, I've been running a survey brand, Africa 100, which is Africa's best brands. And I was trying to understand and assess where, how Africans are doing in building great brands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, over the past 10 years, you can say on average, when we ask Africans themselves, which brands do you admire? 20% of the brands that Africans admire, only 20% of, of the brands that Africans admire are African. So meaning that Africans themselves are rejecting made in Africa. So I said to myself, there's an 80% opportunity for us to be able to play in, 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 in the world stage. Because if we look at the challenges of the continent, whether it's challenges about power, uh, poverty, or inequality, most of those challenges can be uh, overcome if we generate our own incomes mm. uh, and we keep our incomes here and invest in. Forget the leadership, we'll talk about that at some other time. Mm. But in terms, of, uh, in terms of really generating our money, we cannot and should not be a continent that is constantly begging borrowing or blaming others oh so, but, but but we do Tabe. we do unfortunately <laughs> we go cap in hand all the time oh. to ask for these monies and it's something that would it's difficult for us to come away from but you know we are lucky that uh, we, we're lucky that say 70 percent of the continent is under the age of 30 or so so it means that they are not burdened by the challenges of the past about uh, where we come from they are only burdened by the hopes of the future uh, and uh, and some of the things that beginning to do as you're seeing a lot now is the ability Building great brands, the building great young brands, technology brands, and uh, 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 FMCG brands. So our job is to rather focus on those because they are building for the future and to help build those great brands. Because I have no problems with global brands. I have no problems with the McDonald's, uh, Nokia, and Nike. We come from uh, from those brands. But what we need to do as Africans, we need to create brands which compete with them. Because when we compete with them, we make them better and we become even better. But most do we have the, the enabling money, environment to do so? Let's use. Lagos, Nigeria. Let's use Nigeria. We um, need to enforce the enabling environment. How? So, for example, when you speak to uh, uh, speak to Nigerians, and of course I'm not Nigerians, uh, and somebody uh, somebody said to said to me much earlier, said to me, "You'll do fine in Nigeria because you don't complain." Uh, <laughs> you know, the problem that we have is we need to complain, uh, but only, not only should we complain because you know, an African is probably the most proficient in complaining and sitting behind the Twitter and Instagram and whining and telling everybody how bad things are. What we need to do is we need to get out of our comfort zones and we get to power and take and speak the truth to power. But I think we need to take away the power from power because the power ought to be among the people. Because our problem is that what we do as Africans, we elect ordinary people into power instead of ordinary people into service. So when they get to these positions, they now think that they are gods, they now think that they are above us, but when they are campaigning, they want to eat with us, they want to have hot pepper soup with us, uh, they want to, uh, you know, they, they think they are with us now, but as soon as they get into power, they think they're above us. When we get onto highways, we need to move away for them so that they can go past. Meanwhile, the truth is, they should move away for us so that we can go past because they are supposed to work for us. So we need to speak truth to Power, but we need to go to the people of power and assert what we want. I think you're beginning to see that happening in the continent. We yeah. see that, you know, whether it's in Algeria, uh, where they say we are tired of this type of regime. Mm -hmm. When you see that in Sudan, we say we are tired of this type of regime. This is we want a government that works for the people. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's um. Salif Johnson said, uh, he says, Africa is not poor, it is just poorly led. Mm. So we need to put in power the people who lead us well. So is this part of your brand uh, strategy to appeal to the minds of the people in Africa to begin to see that the power belongs to them? Like you said, power resides in them. Because I think it's a mindset change that we need. I want to focus on the one thing that we can all control. Uh, which is our ability to create. So that's why I focus on people who are creating brands, people who are, who are making things and selling things, mm. people who are solving our everyday challenges, whether it's the challenges of power, the challenges of poverty or food security and all those. That's what we can change. You see, what we cannot change, we cannot change entitled politicians. <laughs> but what we can change, we can, we can rather not change, we can enable, we can help a young Mary and a young Tebe uh, 
to create and to build a better brand because that gives him the ultimate power. There's no greater power than economic power. See, political power is good because perhaps it's, uh, it's policies and all those and every enabling environment. But the most enabling uh, uh, power is the power of the, of the, of the dollar. Okay. So these brands that you're talking about, you know, again, I'm going to use my present location. You need a lot of money to be able to get advertising and all of those things. You need a lot of support for that business. You could have a very interesting idea, but if you do not have people to help that idea grow into a kind of brand that you're talking about, of course, nobody's going to see. We would probably not have a table come to, let's say, a Marianne event. So how, what are the best ways to... Bring to birth ideas that could become brands, even when you don't have the money. See, we forget one thing about us Africans. We forget about how we, how we used to thrive and what built our communities. Because you have to start building your brand right where you are. Because mm -hmm. the way we built brands in the past, the way we, we lived in our communities, is we lived through the buttering. So in other words, we knew what Marianne can do, what I can do. Mm -hmm. But we also knew the people that understood us. You start there and it builds and it builds. How was Facebook started, for example, as a global brand? Facebook was started by a guy from uh, I think it was Harvard uh, or Yale, who wanted to speak to his friends in another university and created a small challenge, and that thing built and built and built. That's an African way of how we do things as well. We start where we are. So the mistake that we all make, we think and we begin by saying that in order to be great, you ought to have money. No, in order to be great, you ought to have an idea, and you need to see your idea through. So a lot of us, we've got ideas, and then we then we, we relegate the, the, the delivery of that idea. Oh, but the government is not going to help me. Oh, but the bank is not going to help me. We need to overcome that and take the power onto ourselves and go back to the old traditional African ways of working from within your community and building around. There. A friend of mine, uh, Akin Marino, he is starting a brand um, um, in Ajangule uh, called Fiam. Um, and and, yeah, as, in and fast. Uh, as in fast, uh, and it's a it's 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 a it's a, it's a Wi-Fi, it's a free Wi-Fi or a Wi-Fi uh, a, a, a product. And I said to him, why don't you go to a jungle? I say, come to Lagos. He's like, no, I want to start here among the people whom I understand, uh, where my father comes from, because uh, these these people uh, love this product, and this product can work for them. This product can go beyond that market. Hmm. So that's what uh, that's what you do. You start in a small place. You start small and you build and you build and you build. You look at a young uh, African like Trevor Noah, who's now the biggest uh, star in, 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 in TV. I know. How did Trevor do it? Trevor came from South Africa doing small gigs. He arrived in America and he went from uh, from, uh, from, um, from uh, province to province to province, all those 50 uh, states, and doing small clubs and small clubs, and people got to hear about him. And very soon, he became a big deal, and he got an opportunity to go there. So you will never get an opportunity unless you demonstrate what you can do. Hmm. Uh, a lot of us don't even have the time to demonstrate what we can do because we create barriers and we put barriers in front of us. Nobody else puts barriers in front of you but yourself. Interesting. One last part, which is of uh, utmost interest to me. Africans over the years have complained about how we're portrayed on the international scene. Um, you know, you've been to Lagos many times. There are beautiful places in Lagos, especially where I live. <laughs> but then when we're being portrayed on the news, they go to the bad parts. And I know because I've been to other places where there are bad parts, but they never show those parts on the news. How can Africa tell its own story um, away from the way it's being portrayed? Because we keep complaining, like you said, but how do we go about telling our own story and painting the picture of Africa that we know as opposed to what we see on Western mm -hmm. media? We need to be authentic. So a lot of us, you know, when we go onto social media, for example, we want to take pictures of us um, in Echo Atlantic uh, on boats, uh, saying living my best life, holding a bottle of champagne. That's not the reality of our, of our, of our countries and our continent. Uh, what we need to do, we need to show who we are. You should not be afraid to show people where you come from. You see, when they show us uh, America, they show us Dubai, they show us England, they're showing us their world. We ought to show them our world. We are the ones 
who are, who are afraid of our place. We're ashamed of where we come from. And as a result, everybody looks at the, the, shame, that, the shame that we come mm. from and they look down on it. That's why you see when I post pictures, I hardly ever post pictures, actually I never post pictures of me in any fancy hotel. I don't post pictures of me eating in fancy places. I post pictures of me with the people, having fun, wearing the clothes they wear, going to the communities they love, because that's a story we ought to tell. Because 80 to 90% of us, that's where we come from. Why do we need to glorify the 10% that is not us? We need to glorify the 10% that built us. Because those places where we come from have made us who we are. Mm -hmm. We are resilient people, we are creative people, we are humane people, and we are built by those communities. That's what we ought to promote. We ought to have our own channels. That's why it's so beautiful to be on your, t on, on your channel, because it's a channel by a Nigerian and African in Nigeria telling stories of Africans in Africa to Africans. If the rest of the world listens to us and they see us having conversation, they say, that is the Africa they ought to relate to. Yeah. So we ought to be proud of where we come from. We ought to not celebrate that which is not us. I have much more fun if I take people out into, the, into it's not called rural areas, mm -hmm. to the real areas where mm -hmm. our parents come from, where our family comes from. We ought to celebrate who we are because who we are is the most authentic story of Africa. You know, Fela Kuti said, a great Nigerian, you must identify with Africa, then you'll have an identity. It's been an interesting uh, conversation with Tebe. Uh, I feel like I should just have you here. Don't go. <laughs> <laughs> but well, Tebe um, is actually a brand, uh, a respected brand and reputation authority, and he's been speaking with us about branding and Africa. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you, Marianne. You've been awesome. Thank awesome. you. All right. And that is one-on-one -on -one for today. Enjoy the rest of our programs.